Okay, so I've had very mixed feelings about this laptop. I've had it for a few days and I've constantly been rattling between is this an everyday work laptop or truly a laptop for creators? Now, ASUS say that this laptop is meant for creators and sure, they've done things on this laptop to make life easier for that group of people. For example, they've given a really bright OLED display which is very color accurate. You've got NVIDIA 3050 GPU and you've got option for up to 32 gigs of RAM. And so you can see that ASUS has put quite a bit of thought into making this a very appealing laptop for folks in the creative industry. But that's a really vast industry and can have varying expectation from a laptop. So where does this laptop fit? Let's dive deep into it and start with design. And I'd say it's a very safe design. It's not fancy enough to be a gamer's laptop, but it's not boring to be an office only laptop. It's right in the middle. I've got the 14 inch version here and it's pretty nice and sleek. So it's got a few unique styles. You know, the lid has this metallic badge, which is a standout for sure a color blocked keyboard, which is also a pretty distinct feature. But apart from that, there's nothing more that truly sets it apart design wise. Now the trackpad, the size is quite decent. It's a more convenient size than most laptops. But sure, if you compare it to a similarly sized MacBook Pro, you can see it's very similar, possibly wider, if not taller. But there is one thing that I did not like about it. And let me try to demonstrate that. So this is a proper click on the trackpad, right? But if I don't click all the way down, there's a play involved. So that is not even a defined click uh, and it can take some time to get used to it. Now, even for such a compact design, the ventilation is quite impressive. There's ventilation from behind here and from the vents here at the back, which do a pretty good job of keeping this laptop thermally efficient. You've got speakers firing on the sides closer to you and they've also given this easy to slide camera cover to ease any privacy anxiety. They've given it a bright orange color so it's easy for you to be sure that your camera is indeed blocked. The screen bezels do feel a bit more prominent than they really should have been. I really wished if they could have made the bezels thinner and that would have really elevated my perception and excitement to use this device. Now it only weighs 1.45 kgs which is quite light for the power it packs. Also, it only comes in white and black. I mean, if you're pitching it as a creator's laptop, having it in more colors would have been a great idea because that's how creators tend to express themselves the best. Anyway, so how good is the keyboard? How do the speakers sound? Are the vents good enough to keep the laptop cool? We'll talk all about that, so hang tight. But first, I wanna talk about the connectivity and the ports. It's got these old USB 2.0 ports on the left, but on the right side is where you've got the good stuff. You've got a full-size HDMI port, a micro SD card slot, which I really wished if it was the full size, but this is the small one. A 3.5 mm headphone jack, USB 3.2 type A port and a USB 3.2 type C port. The only thing that I felt was missing is the ethernet port. But again, you can use any adapter and get that going. Anyway, that's the port situation. But now let's talk about the most exciting thing of this laptop, the display. This is a 14 inch Samsung OLED panel and it's one of the most color accurate, bright and colorful displays you can get on a Windows laptop. So this panel right here has all kinds of certifications that really goes on to tell you uh, how committed they are in providing and delivering professional grade displays to you. I mean, being able to tell the difference between two very close shades of gray is important to creative people. And that's exactly what this screen can do. Now I've got a 14 inch display which has a 2.8K screen with 90 hertz refresh rate, but there's a 16 inch model which has a 4K display, but with a standard refresh rate of 60 hertz. The 90 hertz definitely feels a lot smoother than any regular 60 hertz laptop or monitor that you may have used in the past. If you're not a heavy pro user, like you don't have very complex workflows and you can do with the slightly smaller 14 inch display, I would highly recommend that you go with the 2.8K 14 inch 90 hertz display because that smoothness really helps. And the brightness on this is amazing. Peaking at 600 nits, it will work without issues even under the brightest of outdoor conditions. Like think of the Dell XPS 13, the flagship Dell laptop, right? Which costs nearly the same or even more than this, has a peak brightness of 400 nits. And this is even brighter than that. Now most traditional laptops, they have LCD displays which are good, but they're not as colorful, as punchy, as bright, and they don't offer as good a contrast. I mean, once you use an OLED panel, it's very tough to go back to an LCD. I've done my review on the uh, ZenBook Duo. I'll leave a link here, which explains all about this display and everything great about it. Watch that if you need to. 
One issue that I do want to highlight is glare. Although it's a very bright screen, it's easy to see reflections when working outdoors. So if you compare the reflections from the MacBook Pro 2021 on the right and the VivoBook Pro 14X on the left, the difference should be clear. You can put some anti-reflection or anti-glare coating to really help you, but then you will be killing a bit of brightness and color output of this OLED panel. So just something to keep in mind. But OLED panels do have an inherent issue of screen burn in. And ASUS has worked with Samsung to sort of delay that process of pixel aging and even how to work with pixels that have aged. So that does make the process a little better. But yeah, OLED panels and burn in issues sort of go hand in hand. You can reduce that and it's not going to happen immediately. You know, it's going to be a gradual process. Sometimes you may not even notice, but it happens and it's a trade off you got to accept. Let's talk about that keyboard now. It's a definite standout feature given it's color blocked. It's very reminiscent of the mechanical keyboards and gives a very techy vibe to it. It's backlit in a single white color, which is good. You've got some very handy shortcuts in here. You know, you've got volume control, screencast, toggle the camera and microphone activity, and take quick screen grabs. That power button is also a fingerprint sensor and can be used to quickly log in without having you to enter passwords again and again. But the key presses are very satisfactory and I can guarantee you that you can use this for longer typing sessions and you won't feel uneasy. And here's what it sounds like. So yeah, I like that sound. And the one thing I did not like is that the backlighting, it does not feel as premium. There are tiny areas of buttons that are not consistently lit, but that's probably just me nitpicking, but it's pretty evident here. And now let's come to the performance, which is the most tricky and the most objective part of this entire review. So I've got the basic version of 14X. It's got Core i5 CPU, uh, 16 gigs of RAM and RTX 3050, and that's great for casual content creators. And if you have like light work on Photoshop and Illustrator and Lightroom, and even if you create short form content, it's great for that. For example, here I'm working with a 4K video footage and editing this on timeline is flawless. I mean, the fans do start to turn faster, but performance is solid. It's working smoothly and there's no lag, but if I start to layer 4K footage and effects and try to render it real time, the Core i5 may slow down. So as long as your file sizes, image sizes, number of layers, they don't go out of hand, you'll be fine and the system would run without issues. But if you think your workflow is going to be more intensive and complex, you can opt for better CPU variants like Core i7 or the AMD 5900HX. Unfortunately, the 32 gigs RAM variant is not available in India. And that's the thing about these variants. It's really messed up because not all variants are available in all regions. And this is the simplest representation I could come up with, but do check what's available in your region in your market. And you can pause here if you want to get all of this information, but for now, I'm just gonna move on. Now, while this laptop is not pitched as a gaming laptop, but I did try playing Valorant and it was a total breeze. I mean, it's got the RTX 3050 in it, which is like the lightest of RTX 3000 series. And it's just enough to support AAA titles at 1080p resolution with high enough frame rates. You definitely cannot expect a consistent 90 FPS or 120 FPS or even 144 FPS output out of this for AAA titles. But as I said, this laptop is meant for more creative workflows. And talking of workflows, let me give you a quick overview about the virtual dial. So you can activate it just by swiping diagonally on the top right corner. And if you're not in any specific app, it controls your screen brightness and volume by default. But let's say you're in Premiere Pro, After Effects, Photoshop, or Lightroom Classic, it can do a lot more. For example, in Premiere Pro, you can adjust the time access, adjust the height of the audio tracks, and even be able to zoom in on the timeline. And what functions appear and in what order are all customizable using the Pro Art Creator Hub. So if you go in, you can change the default functions as well as functions for each app. And you can add more, you can remove them, you can reorder them. And depending on which app you're using, you can have functions for that app. But you know, it's not as convenient as the actual physical dial that you get in the Pro Art Studio books. This, it's, it's a hit or a miss with this. Honestly, if I'm so used to my mouse and everything that I need to do, I don't really see uh, you know, the whole point of going through that learning curve, getting used to this. It's just not worth it, I feel. You can force it on yourself, but it's just not as intuitive. But you know, hats off to Asus for innovation of this kind. I mean, it is stuff like this that actually accelerates 
and encourages other manufacturers to innovate and and have these laptops ready for the future. Okay, now let's quickly talk about how it handles heat. And I was really surprised. It doesn't really get hot. Sure, it gets warm, but that's pretty normal. I played Valorant for over an hour and this is what it sounds like. And even if I'm editing 4K videos in Premiere Pro, the fans do go a little loud, but it doesn't really get even warm in my opinion. So it's pretty cool. Now sure, it's possible that you run, you know, Photoshop and Illustrator and Premiere Pro all together. Sure, that would only make the fans go faster and noisier, but it still won't get very hot. It's possible that right now I'm in New Delhi and you know, the average room temperature is about 15 degrees Celsius, that's 60 Fahrenheit. That could be responsible for this not getting too hot too quickly, but I can't help that. And now let's talk about battery. And I've always said this about battery, it is super subjective. I mean, you can squeeze out eight hours from this or you can drain this out within three hours. You know, my average use can be so different from your average use. But overall, I mean, on an average, I think it's a pretty good battery. Uh, with constant use, I was able to squeeze about five to six hours with no anxiety of it dying out on me. Uh, as soon as you plug in, Windows shifts to performance mode. And as soon as you plug it out, it shifts to better battery mode. So that definitely helps. Now, additionally, you could go into my ASUS, you know, the app and make a ton of customizations that helps not only balance battery consumption, but also personalize your experience with this laptop. So to conclude, the VivoBook Pro 14X, I think nails it with its OLED display. There are laptops more expensive than this one that offer inferior display. So that's a really great thing that's going on with it. That 2.8K resolution and 90 Hertz, it's a killer combo. And it cuts through everything, whether you're watching movies, you're doing creative work, or you're playing games. For content creators and those in the creative field, I think this is a great laptop to upgrade to. It's got a very recent generation of CPUs. It's got an RTX 3050, so it supports in any graphic rendering that may be required. And 16 gigs of RAM is a great start. I mean, it'll pretty much do everything that you want to. But hey, if you're a serious professional and you do make a living out of it, I would say increase your budget, save some money, and go for something more powerful, maybe like the ZenBook Pro Duo. I've done a review on that, you can catch it over here in the top right corner. But yeah, that's the safe area I would play in. All right guys, that's pretty much it on the VivoBook Pro 14X. If you've got any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section. And as always, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell notification icon. I'll see you guys in the next one.